do you remember um, magical things and stories and imaginations? Did you have all of that when you were growing up? Uh, where does it go? I wonder what happens when we turn into adults. You know, I miss a reason why Disneyland or Disney World are such magical places, you know, how they attract so many kids and how they make adults uh, become kids again. So I, I, I always wonder that, like, do you still believe in magic? Dr. Renita Glenn White. I am your brilliant life strategist and consultant, and I work with high achieving professional people, mainly women who are high functioning, you know, go for the goal, <laughs> go getters. And they, what they're looking for, um, they're looking for more personal satisfaction and, faction and being fulfilled in multiple areas of their lives, especially um, beyond their position, degrees, and titles. And I do that with a series of strategic coaching, strategic questioning, and really going to who you be at your core. And we work with them about, with realigning with their core values with clarity, uh, regaining their voice with confidence, and then embracing reinvention with courage. And all of that is important because it helps them embrace their brilliance. It helps them to vibe higher in their influence, brilliance, and excellence. And when we do all of that, I do believe we can make the world a magical place. So I asked you if you believed in magic still, because we're talking about how to quantum leap your brilliance. So when you hear things about quantum leap and magic, it's easy to go like, either that's for child's play or that's over there somewhere that's like this woo woo space and part of that is true <laughs> part of that is true but i do want to talk about some things that i've learned about quantum leaping your brilliance and what is quantum leaping quantum leaping is it's physics is actually science and that's why i love it when i started learning about it from another coach and applying it to my life it was like okay I, I can dig this, right? So it's really about altering a different state, you know, changing your energy from one state to another quickly, suddenly, you know, at rapid speed. I won't get into too much about that because, you know, that is not my my area to teach. Like I'm still like learning about it, applying it, reading up on it, but it's really in the metaphysics and it's very fascinating. Um, honestly, a lot of it is in the, the, the Bible. I won't get too deep into that either, but sometimes we hear things and people who are proclaimed Christians or uh, follow Christianity or things in the Bible, it's, sometimes it's interesting when they're like, oh, I don't believe in that kind of stuff when Jesus performed miracles like quantum <laughs> quantum leaping things right so that that helped me to like really embrace it it's like it's not that this woo -woo witchcraft stuff or whatever like that and hey if you're into that i got nothing against you right but i'm just saying it's like it's it's interesting how sometimes we can block the magic that happened in our lives because we're so focused on religion i don't know how i got there but i just wanted to put that out there <laughs> all right so quantum leaping and I'm going to share like three things that you're probably like, okay, I can get behind that, but then stay tuned because then there's another thing that sounds so simple, but it's the hardest out of the ones I'm about to share. All right. So stay tuned. So to quantum leap, meaning that you want to be, so here's an example, like you want to change your life drastically. You want to make a certain amount of money. You want to lose a certain amount of weight. You want to gain a certain amount of weight. You want to have this success in your business, your career, and your family and things like that. There is a way for things to happen a lot quicker than you expect for them. So I'm not saying that you're going to do this, close your eyes, click your heels. There's no place like home and magically you reappear in Kansas. That's not what I'm talking about or on the yellow brick road. I'm not talking about like that, but sometimes... You know, for example, if you're like, you want to release a certain amount of weight and 
you might think it takes six months, but if you get behind some of these strategies, you could probably do it in two to three months, you know, in a, in a healthy way, you know. <laughs> uh, the same thing with money, you know, money could like really appear out of seriously nowhere versus you thinking that it's gonna take you two or three years to do certain things. So that's what quantum leaping is. It's not that it's like magical, like snap your fingers, a genie in a bottle, but there are things that you can do in your vibrational area, in your vibra vibrational sphere um, and things like that, things that you can do to get the results quicker, sooner, faster. So one thing is that you need to be consistent. And you hear that, it's like, okay, be consistent. And I talked about this somewhere, somewhere down the line. I need to start keeping track of my videos so I can start pointing and doing the referencing thing. But I talked about being consistent and sometimes we can be consistent, but not consistent at the right thing. So being consistent towards the thing you said you want to be consistent at. And you have to be consistent with intentionality. You can consistently watch Netflix. You can consistently eat the bowl of ice cream. You can consistently spend the money but then it's like, what are the actions that you're gonna take? Remember we talked about optional and non-negotiable. What are the non-negotiable acts that you're gonna be consistent at doing? So that's part of quantum leaping, like those small things compound. Consistency does compound, but right consistency <laughs> compounds to get what you want. So although like in the example of releasing weight, if you consistently work out, consistently eat right, um, consistently um, do all the things, you will release the weight. So that's part one of how to quantum leap your brilliance. When we're talking about brilliance, it's like um, building another business, writing your book, speaking, um, going higher in your career or changing the trajectory of your career, doing something innovative. If you wanna do that, that's what I like to call um, embracing your brilliance. So to quantum leap that, what are you doing consistently to make sure you're headed in that right direction? Are you reading? Are you writing more? Are you pitching yourself? Are you learning you know, business models? Are you learning things about the company that no one else is learning about? Um, are you working on a new strategy behind the scenes so when it's time to present it, you're ready? So what are you doing consistently um, that's related to your brilliance to make sure that you quantum leap? So the first part, again, is intentional consistency. The second thing I learned, and you know, these top three of my coach, she has a video on it. I thought it was really good and I wanted to share it with like my my people, my parallel preneurs, because you know, sometimes, you know, things take long because we make them take long or we don't do what, we're, what we need to do to get the results that we desire. So another thing I learned was to put in sweat equity. And when I used to hear sweat equity, I really thought like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be out here sweating, it's gonna be hard, I don't wanna do this. Uh, but if you think about it, sweat equity really is your time and energy. And when I started learning about it that way, and it was like, oh yeah, I put in a lot of time and energy into goals and that was not negotiable about, and I can see a massive difference. Going back to the video I talked about before where I finished my dissertation in six, my whole dissertation in six weeks, that was a quantum leap uh, move. One, I was consistent in the things that I was doing and the sweat equity. And then it um, relates into the last two things I'm gonna talk about as well. But some people, it took them a year, two years, three years, five years. Um, I've coached some people that they were right at the seven year mark. So, it really works when you are consistently putting in the intentional actions and then your time and energy. Where are you gathering your energy back? You know, because what you focus on, what you pour your energy in to um, expand. So where are you allocating that time? And I like the, I like the um, insert allocated sweat equity because you have to plan for it. My coach is a massive planner. And I thought I was until I started learning about how to be intentional about your time, whether that's time blocking, to-do lists, um, hourly by hourly, whatever the case may be, but allocating the time for the goal that you said you wanted to have. So again, that could be um, anything, building your relationship, are you allocating time time and energy to, to grow that? Are you allocating time and energy to writing your book? Are you allocating time and energy to growing in your career? 
So to quantum leap, not only do you need to be consistent with intentional consistency, you need to have allocated um, sweat equity or allocated time and energy. And that doesn't mean that you give up. Like you say, okay, I'm gonna give this two years and if nothing happens, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna give it six months. If nothing happens, I'm gonna quit. Allocated sweat equity and in order to quantum leap means that you keep putting in the work until you get the result that you want, not because you gave yourself a predetermined timeline. So again, number one was intentional consistency and number two was allocated sweat equity or we can say allocated time and energy. The third way to quantum leap your brilliance is to have community or accountability groups. I lean more to calling my people having a, an accountability group because I'll be honest, me in a in a community sometimes it doesn't really work but you need to have a group of people however you want to call it to hold you accountable they're moving in the same direction like you may not have the same goals but they're forward thinkers like you they're big thinkers like you they want to change the world like you do and you know in a different way but they y'all are still on the same page and then uh people to call you out they're not intimidated by your brilliance because they're just as brilliant, right? So a lot of times we need that. And you know, it's easy for us high achievers and high functioning people to be around in groups and people will let us slide because they're like, oh, you're already doing some, some great things or they may be intimidated to talk to you or whatever the case may be. So you need to be around people who they love you, but then they're gonna call you out and hold you accountable to the things that you said you wanted to achieve. You also need to be around people that you're not intimidated, but they do cause you to stand on your tippy toes. So if you sit down on yourself and you just been like chilling for like a couple of weeks, but then you see them and they're still moving, you know, five, 10 steps, well, two, three, no, we're quantum leaping, five and 10 steps ahead. And then, but then they turn around and say, hey, are you coming along? You don't get, you know, in your feelings are like, oh my gosh, they've achieved so much. Look at me, I sat down on myself and I can't do it anymore. But you need people like that too. When you sit down, they don't come and sit down with you. You know, or when you stop, it doesn't slow them down. So you wanna be around people that causes you to stretch and stand on your tippy toes, but not be intimidated. I have, I have a community, but then I also have two different accountability groups because you know, I work with different types of people and both of those groups hold me accountable for different things. And I that works better for me because I used to put like all of my stuff on one group and it was like, though they're not there for that. And that's perfectly fine. That's why, you know, to, to explore multiple areas of your life, you may have different accountability groups. Now this is different. Don't go get a bunch of them because you are sharing who you are at your core you need to be able to trust them and you know and honor what's happening to be in a safe space but sometimes like you're if you're wanting to start a business but um you got a group of friends where you used to work with and maybe y'all are doing better with community stuff and socializing stuff and building a family talk to them about that because they may not understand your entrepreneurial journey so that's what i mean about you may have different accountability groups or community one thing i will say um if you get a community that's like-minded um it's not always where you are you have to go find these communities and they they may not be in your surrounding area so think about the group that first popped up in my mind were the like mom mompreneurs they're a whole big community but they may not literally be in the exact community they may have to be an online or they may have to go across town to meet with these people because they have built um, a community where we're working moms, where we stay at home and we have our businesses or things like that. I wouldn't necessarily call them, and I could be wrong, uh, so you can com comment down below. I wouldn't necessarily call them an accountability group. That's more of a community to where they support you and they understand, but maybe within that community, you have an accountability group to where you can really um, meet with the people weekly, bi-weekly, and share all the things that you need to share and all the things that I've said. So to quantum leap your brilliance, you do need those three things. You need to be consistent in the right way and focus. You also 
need to make sure you allocate the time and the energy for the goal that you said you wanted to accomplish. Like, you, it's not gonna magically appear. We always like the excuse, I don't have time. Well, yeah, because you don't plan for it. And then you wanna make sure that you have community and accountability. But if you had to pick one, I'll aim for accountability. Now, here is the part <laughs> where I ask you if you believe in magic. There are two examples that I'm going to give you, and this is really, I think, at the core of quantum leaping, because this is for the people who they've done steps one, two, and three, and they're still probably like, really, Dr. B, I'm still not there yet. Yeah, I had some progress, but it, it's not coming fast enough. And I'm going to say this. First, I'm going to give you the two examples. I'm not going to go through the whole scenario. Um, but when I tell you this, it, you'll get the point. So the first one, if you think of a lemon, like close your eyes or cast a soft gaze on the ground, you have a lemon, think of a lemon, you have it in your hand, you touch it, you squeeze it, and then you go get a knife and you cut it. And then you can smell it, it's fresh, it's citrusy, it's lemony. You know what a lemon smells like. And if you don't, I apologize for assuming. And then you have your eyes closed and then you lick the lemon. What happens to your mouth? This gets me every time. Like I had a business coach do this exercise uh, with a group of us and my mouth water. And even as I'm talking, my mouth water and then I watched her on the video talk about this and she even said she knows that she was giving this example and her mouth still watered. Our bodies didn't know that we actually weren't licking the limit. You see how fast it took our brains to go from the thought to the taste to that actual action? Hold that example. The second thing I want you to do is close your eyes and imagine yourself at your mailbox or you can imagine yourself, you really want to test this out, that you're at a grocery store. You are you know this grocery store, you've been in there hundreds of times and you know where the bread aisle is, if you eat bread or the water aisle, whatever aisle. Go grab that item and then go to the, the checkout so you can um, register and, and exit. Or you can imagine yourself going to your mailbox. How fast did it take you in your mind to go either from your, where you are to your mailbox or from your, your home to the grocery store to check out? It went by super quick. And that's because our brains, we told our brains that one, we lit the lemon, <laughs> and two, that we're actually in this physical space about to either check our mail or check out the grocery store. And like I said, I won't get too deep into this, but our subconscious really doesn't know the difference between what's happening in our minds and what's happening in reality. It took you um, like 0 0.02 seconds to go to the grocery store or to the mailbox. And it took just simple imagination for your brain to think that you were actually think of, think of, think that you were licking a lemon. In order to quantum leap, even if you've done those three things, you have to put yourself in the future of where you want to go. You have to do that internally. You have to feel the feelings. You have to believe to a level where it's in your cells that your brain doesn't know that you're not already there. When I told you this step about the limit, you actually went through it, you went through the emotions, even if it was just that quick, it was enough for your brain to say, oh, limit, and your mouth started watering. The same thing about the grocery store. You immediately saw yourself in the grocery store picking up that item and heading to the counter. Your, your body honestly thought you were doing that. The only difference is when you look down, you have the item in your hand. So stay with me. What I'm saying is, in order to go quantum leap, your brain can take you faster than your actual reality. A lot of times we don't believe anymore. We don't think that we can get there. We don't think that we can fly. We don't think that we're superheroes or super sheroes. We don't get that emotion back in our body. We don't feel it at our core. And then we wonder why things aren't happening as quickly as they are because we have all of these blocks. 
once you do that a few times and your brain is like, oh, they are serious, your brain can't unsee or unfill that goal. So now everything in your brain, because I truly do believe, I believe in God, <laughs> but you know how people say the universe is conspiring to, to work with you and help you? That is so true. You know, God feeds the animals in the, in the, in, um, feeds the animals and allows the plants to grow without any interaction. What do you think he's gonna do for you and I? So once you believe, and your brain sees it and feels it and it's like, oh, we like that. We want to get back there. Now it's going to do everything to keep you consistent and following that. Now it's going to make sure you put in that time and energy like you're going to look for because you want that feeling again. Now it's going to make sure that you are around people that support and lift you up and you're constantly sharing and you're constantly in that atmosphere because your body and your brain and your subconscious now is coming to the conscious is like, how do we get that? How do we get that? How do we get that? Right? So I hope that makes sense. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I just want to drop that little nugget with you, especially if you're watching this um, at the beginning of a season where you're wanting to do new goals. And if you're like me, you, you have some that you had on there for the last two years and you're like, okay, I need to make a change. Start by being consistent, of course. Start uh, making sure you're al you allocate time and energy to you know, that sweat equity and make sure that you are in a space where you're being held accountable. But most importantly, you have to believe at a certain, at a level that it gets into your cells to where your body physically feels the reaction. Like, how does it feel to reach that goal? How does it feel to release that weight? What is your body going to go through when you, you write that book? Um, one example, and um, I did this 21 days straight as I was writing my book, honestly, it was, it was more than that. Um, but I know I did a thing for 21 days straight, but as I was writing, I was like, I want to make, um, Amazon bestsellers list. I want to make Amazon bestsellers list, all of that. And literally I would sit in the feeling like, what does it feel like to be on the list? Um, what am I going to say? How's my body going to feel? What am I going to be wearing when I do this? I set up a 21 day like launch strategy to announce my book. I was like, okay, day one, this is what we're doing. I talked about it. I leaned into it. I felt it. I said, told people like I'm about to make it. So I was all in this energy. It didn't even happen yet, but I would, I would go look like my name was already on the list. I did all the things and, I, and it ended up happening. But then I look at some goals that I had the same year as that, as that one. Why didn't I make it? I didn't believe. I didn't get into the space, the energy. I didn't allow my future self to see it, you know? And even if I was consistent, I put in the sweat equity, um, I had the, the accountability. I'm gonna be honest, none of that meant anything. It was just, I was doing things just to do things. And eventually things probably would have happened, but I wasn't gonna quantum leap without first seeing myself as I, I was already there. So that's why I ask you, do you believe in magic still? Do you still imagine? There was a reason why we were born like that as little kids, you know, with no filter and to be able to think the impossible. You know, I don't know too many kids who didn't believe they, could, they couldn't fly until someone told them they couldn't, right? And think about it, that's how we end up with airplanes and going into space and all the things that can put us up into the air because someone was like, no, I'm gonna get this feeling again. So go back and look at some of your goals. Are you, Yes, you've probably been consistent and you put in the time and energy and you have a community, but are you believing in your brilliance to where you already see yourself and you have the feeling? It is the feeling. And if I did not experience this myself, I wouldn't be able to share this with you. And I'm getting the feeling now, <laughs> like I'm back there. And now I wanna take that same energy and quantum leap some, some other areas um, of my life. And I invite you to do the same. So let me know down below anything that you would like to share, whether you agree or disagree. Tell me some tips, you know, that you've experienced on quantum leaping and what did you do to get to um, your goal quicker, sooner, faster? All right, so leave them down below. I would love to hear from you, regardless if you agree or disagree. And as always, um, I wanna say thank you for listening and learning with me. And before you go, I want you to remember to be well, to be empowered, to be bold, and to be brilliant. Until next time, bye.